All right, hey there, uh, welcome back. So today we're gonna be creating a state machine. It's gonna allow us to have a nice little game loop set up where if we swap pieces, if there's a match from when the pieces fall down, I'm trying to get it to happen here so you can see what I'm talking about. So if we get a match from when the pieces fall down, we can have that match be cleared before we're allowed to have any control again. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's, oh, there we go, did it right there. All right, so that's what we're doing today. Let's dive right in. All right, so welcome back. So where we left off last time, here's what we have. Uh, we have our board. I can make my matches on it. It detects matches, columns collapse, and new pieces fall in. But what's happening here is it's not detecting repeated matches. For example, um, if something happens where I have a match that comes before I would move again, uh, it doesn't automatically detect that match. So what we want to do is uh, kind of create a game loop where this whole thing becomes self-sustaining. So where I can have the pieces fall in, it's going to check to see if there's matches, and if there are matches, it's not going to let me move until everything is settled and there's no more matches on the board. So we're going to accomplish this today using something called a state machine and uh, some of the methods that we've already created. We're just going to need one more method and then just that state to make this happen. So let's get started. First, I want to go into my grid script here. I'm going to open this up. And the very first thing I'm going to do is create uh, some enums. And an enum, you can think of it kind of like a Boolean. Booleans can be true or false whereas enums can be many different states. Uh, and you can you know, give a list of exactly what you want those states to be instead of just true or false. So in this case, I'm gonna do, uh, let's make a little comment here for these. We'll call this state machine. And then my state machine is gonna be enum. And then I'm just gonna use two states right now. I'm gonna use wait and uh, move meaning that either the player has to wait for things to settle or they're allowed to move right away. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a variable that I'm going to call state. So I'm going to say uh, var state, and I'm just creating it. I'm not assigning it right now. Now, down here in my function ready, I'm going to assign a value for my state. I'm going to say state is equal to uh, I'll do move right away. So as soon as the game starts up, the player is able to move. Okay, and then we're just going to trace the player's movements from there. So when the player starts, they're allowed to move. Everything kind of gets settled in. Now, the next thing that happens is the player could um, use some touch input and actually make a movement. I'm actually going to get rid of all of that great big comment there. And what I want to do is I want to take all of this touch input, and actually, let's do it in um, process delta. That's a better place to do that. So in my process delta, I'm only going to access touch input if our state is currently move. So I'm going to say if state is move, then I can do the touch input. Uh, however, if state isn't move, we're just going to jump right over this. So Instead of having to create a whole bunch of other switches, I'm just making this one switch that's just going to look for what that enum value is. Uh, okay, cool. And then uh, after we swap our pieces here, uh, first we're going to check to see if first piece and other piece um, exist. And if they both exist, then we're going to change what our state is. So we're going to say state is equal to weight. So now we're in the wait state, and once we swap our pieces, we won't be able to move again. So if I did everything right, and it's very possible I didn't, when I go back in here, I should be able to swap once. Things fall in, but I shouldn't be able to swap again. And that's because we're not, no longer in the move state, we're in the wait state. And what I want is after everything settles, I want to go back through the board and see if there are any matches so I can catch this and then have it settle and then go through the board again and check to see if there are any matches and keep checking for matches until there aren't any 
And when there aren't any, set the state back to move. So uh, let's see, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my script here. I've got my uh, refill timer timeout, refill columns. Okay. So after I refill my columns, I want to go through and check all of my pieces again. Uh, so I'm going to create a new little function here. I'm going to call this function, um, I don't know, maybe uh, after refill. That's a good name. And what this is going to do is this is going to cycle through everything on the grid and see if there's a match. And if there is a match, then it's going to uh, trigger the appropriate um, timers. So for example, um, it'll trigger the destroy first. Yep. It'll trigger the destroy timer. Um, and if there isn't a match, then it will reset the game back to move, if that makes any sense. So let's look through all the pieces here. We're going to say for i in width and for j in height. Uh, first, we're going to check to see if uh, that particular place isn't null. So if all pieces i, j is not equal to null, then uh, we're going to check for matches. You know, we already have a method that does that from way back when we were creating the board without a match. And that's match at. We need a row, a column, and a color. So I'm just going to pass in the row, the column, and the color. So I'm going to say uh, if, uh, did I call it match at? Yeah, I did. We're going to use i as our row, j as our column, and then for our color, we're going to use all pieces, i, j, dot, color. So if that's true, then we're going to trigger the destroy timer. So we're going to say destroy, oops, what did I call that thing up here? I thought I called it destroy timer. This is what happens when you go a week without looking at your project. Um, didn't I reference it up here? Oh, I just used git node. That's why. All right, cool. So I'm going to say uh, git node. And the node I want to get is, oh, I actually want to get it for my parent. Get parent dot git node. Destroy timer. There we go. <laughs> All right, cool. So we'll start that destruction cycle again. Now, if we're able to go through, oh, and the other thing I want to do is I want to break out of this loop. Break. Um, so what's going to happen? I'm going to call this method after I refill my columns here. So in here, outside of the two for loops, but still in this refill columns, I'm going to call after refill. And then in after refill, I'm going to look through every piece. I'm going to check to see if there are matches. If there are matches, then I'm going to call that destroy timer again, just like I do once I swap the pieces. Oh, I should do find matches first. Let's do that. Um, okay. Uh, destroy timer dot start. And before I do that, I'm going to call find matches. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So after refill. Looking at all of the columns, all the rows, checking the piece if it exists. Uh, if it does exist, we're going to say or check to see if there's a match there. Uh, if there is a match there, then we're going to find matches. We're going to uh, get parent, get node, destroy timer, start, and then we're going to break out of. Um, actually, let's not do break. Let's do return to just get out of the whole method. So break would just get us out of the for loop. Return is going to get us out of the entire method. And then, if we're able to get through every piece on the board without getting kicked out, then we're going to make the state back to move. So we'll say state equals move. So let's see if I broke everything. Let's go to play here. All right, cool. I might need to speed this up just to play, just to see if I can 
get everything the way it's supposed to be um, so that I can see, you know, one of those combos triggered. But if I need to fast forward, I'll do that. Okay, cool. So I did it right there. Uh, let's try this. Cool. All right, nice. So, cool, we've got our little game loop set up here. Now, this um, kind of structure that we're putting in is something we're going to use as we go forward. So having this little state machine here is actually pretty good, because then in the future we can have a win state, a lose state, all kinds of other things that we can control using that state machine. And based on which state we're currently in, we can decide which part of the code is being activated or deactivated. So it's really like you're having um, one object turned into many objects. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join me on Discord, where I've been chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, feel free to give me a like if you learned anything new. And have yourselves a wonderful day.